Hey guys, it's Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. So today I wanted to do another flashback favorites video. So I did one of these I think in May. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to flashback to my favorites videos from two years ago. So in this one I'm going to be talking about my favorites from June and July of 2016. And we're going to talk about whether or not those products are still favorites or not. A lot of the products are still in my collection today. Some of them are not. So, but yeah, we'll just go ahead and get started. I really like doing these kinds of videos because I feel like it's a good way to kind of go back and reflect on favorites from previous years and talk about whether or not they are just as good as what I thought they were then. Um, a lot of times, you know, your skin type changes, your your preferences just change, um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So starting with my favorites from June of 2016, my first favorite that I mentioned was the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. I no longer have that. I... Pretty sure I tossed that um, a while ago because it, you know, sponges kind of get gross after a while. But I haven't repurchased it yet, although I'm thinking about going back to it because um, I, I do remember really liking it. But the other thing is that I really do like to test out new things. Right now the sponge I have is from Lauren Brooke Cosmetics um, because I'm doing, I'm going to be doing a brand review on that brand pretty soon. The one I had before that was the Flower Beauty sponge and I also really liked that one. So I don't really know if I would go out and buy the Real Technique sponge right away. Um, I've been without it for a while. I did enjoy the Flower Beauty sponge. I don't know if I'm really enjoying the Lauren Brooke Cosmetics one, but um, I, I do really though want to try the Beauty Blender just to see what it's all about because I've never tried it before. But I'm pretty sure that I would definitely consider going back to the Real Technique sponge. The next thing that was a favorite in June 2016 I do still have. It's the e.l.f. Long Lasting Lustrous Eyeshadow in Soiree. This is in my Finish 13 by Halloween project pan right now. Um, so, but this is definitely still a product that I really enjoy. It's a really, really pretty kind of shiny, like cranberry, um, mauve -y, metallic <laughs> shadow. It's kind of a cream shadow. It's a really interesting texture. It's almost a cream powder kind of texture, but um, these do dry out, so that's why I'm trying to use it up, and I have had it for, well, I guess over two years now, so I should probably hurry up and try to finish that before it dries out. I do really like these, and I also had the one in Toast, that, which was like a really, really pretty bright gold, um, but that one I actually did use up um, last year, so. But these are really nice if you're looking for like a super, super pigmented metallic cream shadow. These are just, they're really nice as like a pop on the lid. So I really enjoy that. The next thing that was a favorite was the Physicians Formula Matte Collection Quad Eyeshadow in Quartz Quartet. I actually decluttered that several months ago just because I, I feel like I was kind of over it. It really was kind of like a boring selection of like four matte shadows. There was one in particular in there that was kind of like a rosy brown shade that I did really enjoy and I actually used quite a bit of that one up. Um, I didn't use it up completely, but I decluttered that. I think I actually gave it to my mom. So yeah, I think they actually discontinued that quad. It was nice. I mean, the shadows were really soft and really easy to blend, but I, I was kind of just over it. The next favorite from June was the Jordana Easy Liner for Lips in Rose Crush. I still have this. I still like it. I actually do have two other lip liners from Jordana too, and I really like them. They're very inexpensive. I think they're under $3. This one is just a nice neutral pink. It would go nicely under a lot of different lipstick shades. I also just kind of like to wear these on their own on my lips. Today I'm wearing the one in the shade Tawny, which is like my all-time favorite. I'm wearing that under a lipstick, but yeah, these lip liners are really nice. I don't feel like you need to spend a lot of money on lip liners. I mean, these Jordana ones are nice. I also like the ones from Milani. Um, but yeah, these are great and they're so cheap, so I definitely highly recommend those. The next thing that was a favorite in June that I do still have is the Orly in a Snap Quick Dry Top Coat. I'm surprised that I've already had this for two years and it's still working really well. I don't feel like it's gotten too thick or anything. I use it pretty much every time I paint my nails and it does a really great job just helping them dry quickly. Because before I had this, I remember having the problem where I would paint my nails and then even if it was early in the afternoon, and then I would go to bed that night and I would still wake up with the like imprints on my nails from like the sheets, you know? So this has really helped solve that. Now I can paint my nails like late at night, like right before bed and it's fine. I don't have that problem anymore. I don't really know how well this does with like actually helping your nail polish last longer, um, but I think it does help at least a little bit. But it, the main purpose of this is just to help your nails dry quicker um, and I really like it for that. 
The last favorite from June 2016 was the Kiss My Face Moisture Shave. I specifically talked about the fragrance-free version. I do actually still have this. I just repurchased it, um, but I got it in the Peaceful Patchouli scent this time. Um, this is probably the third bottle of this that I've owned, and it's a really, really good shaving cream. There's a ton of product in here. Um, I mean, this will last me a really long time. So I really like this. It comes out as a cream, but it really does lather up nicely on the skin. Um, it's not like a, like a super foaming shaving cream, but it... I think it does a really good job and it's very moisturizing. So I haven't even opened this yet because I'm still using up my other shaving cream. But once that one is gone, I really am looking forward to going back to this one. Now on to the July 2016 favorites. There are only a few of these that I actually still have. Um, one of them is the EcoTools Precision Blush Brush. I still use this a lot. It's a very standard size and shape for this kind of brush. And I do really like it. However, I actually have a new favorite blush brush and it's the Ulta Beauty blush brush. How many times can I say blush brush in this video? This one is just, it's a little bit, the bristles are a little bit longer and it's just a little bit more fluffy and it has, I don't know, it has a little bit more give I guess so it, I feel like it just gives a nice diffused application whereas the Eco Tools one is a bit more precise which I guess is why it's called the precision blush brush but I still like both of these I just kind of prefer the Ulta one a little bit better now but yeah I've been a big fan of, of eco tools brushes for a long time I think they're really well made I've had some eco tools brushes in my collection for almost 10 years now and they're still holding up so I think they're really well made the next favorite was a wet n wild eyeshadow brush I do remember that brush I definitely decluttered it a while ago I think they discontinued it but it was just like a kind of like a flat shader brush but it was a little bit fluffier so I really liked that it's like a multitasking brush I feel like the new wet n wild large eyeshadow brush kind of is similar to that so um, if you're looking for kind of like a multitasking eyeshadow brush that can work as a shader brush but also it can kind of blend things out um, that wet n wild large eyeshadow brush is really good next favorite this is still a favorite the balm nude dude palette I remember I had probably just recently bought this when it was a favorite back then. Um, this was actually my first high-end eyeshadow palette purchase, I think. It's kind of just nostalgic for me. There's nothing super special about these shades. Um, I do like that it does have kind of some rosy tones in there. I love these like dusty mauve type of shades. Those are always my favorite. Um, it has a really nice gold. Um, I like the shade Fabulous. It's kind of like a duochrome white gold. My favorite shade in here is Flirty, which is like a really pretty lavender with gold shimmer in it. It's just a really nice palette. I do enjoy it a lot. Um, I've got really significant dips in Faithful and Flirty, but I haven't actually hit pan on any of these yet. But it's still a favorite. I still reach for it pretty regularly just because I, I don't know, I like it. It's, it's, I like the packaging. I like how slim it is. And I think it's just a little bit nostalgic for me. Like this is one of those makeup products that, um, I don't know if I'd ever really declutter this because I do just, it has a special place in my heart. That was actually the last thing in that favorites video that I still have. Um, the next few things I can kind of talk about briefly, the e.l.f. eyebrow kit in medium. That was like a little compact that had a dark wax and then also kind of a lighter powder. I used a lot of that. I don't think I used it up completely. I think I eventually decluttered it just because it was so old. I mean, I definitely liked it back then, but I don't think I'd go back to it because I don't really understand why they put a, such a dark colored wax in there and such a light powder. Like, I would rather have a, a clear wax or a colorless wax and then like a powder to actually match my brows. And I actually do have a kind of a similar product now. It's the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Kit, which I do really like. It has um, like a clear wax and then a medium brown and a dark brown. The only downside is that this is the only shade it comes in. So if neither of these two powder shades work for you, then you're kind of out of luck. But I kind of like this format a little bit better. I remember when I had the e.l.f. brow kit, I would only use, I don't think I even used the powder. I think I only used the wax because it was such a dark color. It, like filled in my brows, but I don't know. I don't think I really knew what I was doing back then, to be honest. So I think my favorite format for eyebrow products now is a pencil. I really like the Brow Wiz, and um, I'm kind of on the hunt for a cheaper like Brow Wiz alternative. So um, I think I'll probably stick to pencils for the most part from now on. But I do like this um, Wet n Wild Brow Kit 
I think better than the e.l.f. one, at least looking back now. The next product was the Wet n Wild Fergie Take on the Day Mattifying Powder. That powder, they, they discontinued their Fergie line a long time ago, but they, I think that powder was just repackaged as their, um, just their mattifying powder, which I actually just recently used up another one of those. And I think I decided I didn't really like it as much as I thought I did, um, just because it was, it's just a, a white translucent powder and First of all, it ran out really quickly, at least this time around, and I feel like it just it didn't look very good on my skin. I think it kind of made my skin look a little bit dry, so I don't think I would go back to that. Another thing that was a favorite that I don't have anymore, this is the last one, the It's a 10 Miracle Leave-In product. I think my mom still uses that. She really likes the It's a 10 brand hair products. That brand, um, they are not Cruelty Free on Logical Harmonies list, but I think they are Leaping Bunny certified, so um, kind of probably want to do your own research on that brand, but I don't so I don't really purchase from them anymore because A, they're really expensive, <laughs> um, and B, I just, I usually like to be sure that a, that a company is cruelty free, so I, I really only purchase from brands that are Logical Harmony certified, unless I can do like a lot of other research, but um, I do remember really liking that product. I think it made my hair super soft, but I wouldn't, I don't think I'd go back to it. I think I just had like a sample of it that I'd gotten as like a free gift at Ulta. Um, but it was nice. I, I definitely did remember really liking that. Also, it smelled really good. <laughs> but anyway, so those were all the products that were in my June and July favorites back in 2016. Um, I do want to keep doing these videos, although I went for a really long time. I was looking back through my playlists. I went a really long time without doing any favorites videos just because I... I guess I just wasn't feeling inspired to do them. So, um, But I, I will continue to do these as much as much um, as much as I can. For any months where I did have favorites, I will definitely try to go back and kind of share my current thoughts on those products. Let me know if you enjoyed this style of video. I hope that if you enjoyed, you'll subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!